of Jesus. We thank God that even as a family that we can come together to glorify him, to uplift him, to magnify his holy name on high, and that we can use his word as a weapon today. We can use his word to bring down every stronghold today. We can use his word to change our situations and our circumstances. God is faithful. We have to remain faithful. It is hard to remain faithful when we are challenged with much. But God does not change. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, he is seated on the throne on high. Amen? Amen. Last week, I spoke to you on facing your giant. You have to first face your giant. You can't run away from your giant. I spoke to you about how to face your giant. But now facing your giant alone is not good enough. You have to kill your giant. So today, I'm going to talk to you, speak to you from the word of God on how to kill your giant. Goliath must die. He must come down in the name of Jesus. The book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 40. I'm reading you from verse 40. David, we speak it, we still, uh, on, uh, we still speaking, uh, I'm still talking to you about David. The Bible says, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had. And his sling was, was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near David and the man Boy, his shield went before him, and the Philistine looked upon, looked up, looked about, looked about, and saw David. He disdained him, dis, disdained him, disdained him, meaning that he felt he was he was so unworthy of the of his opponent. Means that he was so he, he disdained him. Means that you know he thought of him so lowly, coming against him, for he was only a youth ruddy and good looking. The Bible had to mention that, that he was youth and he was good looking. So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all the assemblies shall know that the Lord does not say with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you and he will give you into the into our hands. So it was that the Philistine arose and came near and, and drew near to meet David. That David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. And he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead. So that the, so, the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And, the Philist and when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. This is such a powerful not a story, a powerful reality that actually took place. You know, every time when I read, after I read this portion of scripture, and as I was preparing this message, all I have in my mind is this picture of a small boy running to a giant. You know what a powerful impression that this is. If you read the word of God with understanding and want to make it applicable in your life, the word of God becomes a reality. 
It becomes the word that you overcome the enemy with. You know, we know that there's all different sizes of giants that roam the face of the earth currently. The, today, today in our world, we have the, the giant of debt, we have the giant of disaster, we have the giant right now of the coronavirus, we have the giant of sickness, we have the giant of isolation, we have the giant of deceit, we have the giant of depression, we have the giant of marital problems, we have so many giants roaming the earth. So many giants roaming the earth. And we just can't face them. We have to kill them. So I'm going to give you practical steps from the word of God on how to deal with the supersized challenges that may leave many of us hopeless, fearful, and in distress. Our giants are always stalking us. David just didn't, when he hit him with a sling and he fell down, he needed to make sure he was completely killed. He was, he was, he was dead. He made sure that he was dead, so he cut off the head of the giant. The only solution, the only solution to face our giant and to kill our giant is God. David didn't come to him with a sword. He didn't come to him with a javelin. He didn't come to him with a knife. He didn't come to him with a gun. He came to him in the name of the Lord of hosts. Because it is as simple as that. But we don't often understand what power is available to us in the name of the Lord. We don't understand it completely. And if you read, if you read 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 40 onwards, if you read if everything that David was, how David challenged Goliath, was not by anything else but because of God, because of the name of God, because of who God was to him. We can only face our giants and kill our giants by facing God first. In all of David's interactions with Goliath, you have to pay attention to how David did it, how David overcame and killed his giant, so we too can have the same experience as what they are challenging with. Said to you yesterday, today, and forevermore, God is still the same. He's not changed, he's an unchanging God. Yesterday, today, and forevermore is the same. So the same victories that David had, we too can receive. The same victories and the same way David did it, we too can do it. So how did he do it? I want to give you, if we know what David knew, we have to do what David did. He picked up five stones. I want to show you the five stones, how it will be, the five P's on how to kill your giant. The first stone, you can say it's represented, it, re it represented the past, the stone of the past. Goliath jogged David's memory. When Goliath stood in front of the Israeli army, he jogged David's memory to what? To the time when he overcame and he killed the bear. The time when he overcame and he killed the lion, because that's what he had to present to the king in order for him to go and face the giant and kill the giant. So when he the, the five stones that he picked up, I want to show you how you can use it in representation of how to kill your giant. So they, Goliath jogged David's memory. It was like a deja vu moment for him. That how he overcame the bear, how he overcame the lion, how he was victorious over him. So while everyone else trembled, David remembered. While everybody else was trembling, David was remembering. Because what does the Bible tell us? How do we overcome our enemy? He says by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So it is no different now. We can overcome the enemy with the stone of the past victory that we have had to overcome our current challenges, our current problems, our current Goliath. God had given him the strength to wrestle with the lion, to strong arm the bear. Wouldn't he do the same with the giant that we face today and that he faced then? A good memory makes a hero. A good memory of what had happened makes a hero. A bad memory makes you tremble, fear, and become fearful of that. Because if you had a bad experience, you had a bad memory, it didn't show that you overcame the challenge. So you can only overcome by your victories in Christ. Remember the marvelous works that God has done in your life. Today you have to remember, make a list, make a list of all the victories, of all the successes, something that you were praying about something that was a challenge for you in your life write it down and say you know what i prayed about this for a long time 
but here's how God has come through for me. This is why I was fearful of it all the time. And this is how God helped me to overcome. So today, take the stone of the past and carve on the stone and engrave your successes because that is one of the stones you're going to use to bring down and kill your giant. You have to know God's provision for your life. How he provided for you. You have to know God's healing over your life. You have to know the <coughs> overcoming power that you were enabled through what God has done for you to bring down your giants. Say, like God helped David to kill the lion, to kill the bear, is going to help me to bring this giant down. That's what David used. That's what you too can use. The first step to take down your giant and kill your giant is to engrave yesterday's victories in the stone. Pick up the stone of the past and remember the victory because you overcome by the word of your testimony. How do you overcome the enemy? The Bible tells you in the book of Revelation by the word of your testimony and the blood of your lamb. The blood of the lamb. Then select the stone of prayer. The second stone can represent the stone of prayer. Before going high, David went low. Before, before ascending to fight, David had to descend to prepare. In the times that David was all alone, and the times that David was challenged with many things, we see throughout scripture how David went in prayer before God. David always prayed. Prayed and seeked the face of the Father. Don't face your giant without doing the same first. You have to have the stone of prayer. Dedicate time to prayer. The Apostle Paul wrote, Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Be watchful to this end with perseverance and supplication for all saints in Ephesians 6.18. You have to pray. You cannot face any Goliath or any giant, neither kill any giant without prayer. Prayer guarantees David's successes. Prayer will guarantee your success too. David knew how to draw strength from God in prayer and in praise and in worship. When you are praying and praising, and worship, it strengthens you to have the confidence in God, knowing full well that you can bring down every Goliath, every giant in your life, and ensure complete death of that giant. David knew how to draw strength from God. The Bible records he strengthened himself in God. He strengthened himself in God. How do you strengthen yourself in God? In, the, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, the Bible says he strengthened himself in God. How do you draw strength from God? It's when you are speaking to God, the Spirit of God comes upon you. In prayer, you strengthen yourself in God. As you wait upon him, you strengthen yourself in him. When Saul's soldiers tried to capture David, David turned toward God and he said, You have been my defense, my refuge in the day of trouble. Psalms 59, 16. Every time, not only did David, David face one Goliath, and that's where the Goliath died, and the Goliath came down and the giant was dead. No. There were giants that David had to face on, a, on an ongoing basis and in a number of events in his life. And in each time, he showed us how he spoke, called God. He says, you have been my defense. You are my refuge. You are my strength. You are my hiding place. You are my fortress. He did this in prayer, in communication to God. Prayer is your communication. Take up the stone of prayer and ensure that you also will receive the same successes as David did. How do you think David managed to be a refuge and survive in a cave when Saul pursued him? It was his prayer. Prayer, David prayed prayers like this. Be good to me, God. Be good to me, God. Save me. I run to you for my dear life. I hide under the wings. I, I hide under your wings until the storms blow over. So in prayer, this is how you, you build up your, you build up resistance against the enemy. And you bring your enemy down to destroy the enemy completely. I call out to high God, the God who holds me together. Psalms 57.1. When we are in times of distress, we want to read Psalms that is comforting. When you read Psalms that gives us hope, you can pray the same Psalms. 
You can pray the same Psalms to God as David did. When David soaked his mind in God, he stood firm and was successful. When he didn't, he saw his failure. There was times that David failed God also. When he sinned against Bathsheba, when he ordered the murder of, of uh, Uriah, when all of those things happened, he wasn't soaking himself in God then. So when you keep, the Bible says to us in the book of uh, Isaiah 26, 3, we, you will keep him perfect. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. God promises not, God promises just not peace, but perfect peace to the one that stays in him and soaks himself in him. It's undiluted peace. It's unspotted peace. It's unhindered peace to him, to whom? To those who, whose minds are fixed on him. To whose minds are fixed on him. We, we mustn't just be the occasional glance, just the occasional thinking about God and his word. You have to fix your mind on God. You have to soak your mind on God. You have to be in his presence. Prayer must be a continual thing. Not just the time that you spend when you have a dedicated time for your morning worship or your afternoon prayer or your evening prayer. Let the prayer be a lifestyle in your mind continuously. Because no, you will have full confidence as David had that every giant must come down. You have the ability to kill your giant as you trust God. Those who fix their mind on God has perfect peace. You have peace that no matter what you are currently facing, that God has already given you the power to overcome. That every Goliath must come down. Every giant has, is, is not going to stand there and avail and prevail over you. You have destroyed it by, by, by what, how your relationship is connected to God in prayer. Peace is promised to those who fix their thoughts and desires on the King. Invite God into your thoughts Invite God through the power of the Holy Spirit into your prayer life to become as David. To become as David did. That you have the successes. Pick up the stone of prayer and never neglect to soak yourself and your mind in God as David did. Because if you want to become successful as David did, you have to do what he did. You know when we follow successes? Sometimes we follow somebody in their financial train, train of thought how they became successful. We had to follow their patterns in order for us to receive the same outcomes. So we too can follow God's word because it's been given to us for instruction. It's been given to us to change our lifestyle. It's been given to us for victory and success. So if we follow it, it will give us the same outcome. So let us follow it and, and see how God will work through it as we trust him. The third is a stone of priority. Remember, what is your highest priority? What is your highest priority? As a believer, our highest priority should be God. But it's unfortunate that many of us do not have this as our highest priority. Today, if that's not your highest priority, let it change. Because then that stone that David picked up, you can remember it as a stone of priority in your life. God's reputation was David's highest priority. Because what did he say to, uh, what did he say to, the, to the Israel army? He says, how dare this uncircumcised Philistine defiled the armies of a living God. How dare he do that? That's what he said. How dare he do that? So when David was going up to Goliath, he was using, he was going to protect God's reputation for the armies of Israel. David jealously guarded and protected God's reputation. No one was going to defame and defile his God and his law. David fought that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. I just read it to you now. Did he say that? He says, all of, all of the earth will know there is a God in Israel because I'm going to defeat you because there is a God in Israel. So no demon can come up against you. No enemy can come up against you. No giant can stand and avail and prevail against you because there is a God in your life. There is God to protect you. So the stone of priority must be God's reputation in your life. We are representing God on earth. We are God's represent, representatives on earth. Isn't that true? We represent who Christ is. Jesus is not here to represent himself, but he lives through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We represent him on earth. So David fought so that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. 
we may stand up and fight against every giant and kill every giant so that they may know there is a God that is that is a true and a living God and that avails and prevails over every situation in our life and that we can represent him correctly to everyone around us. David said, the battle was not his. He said the battle, that the battle is the Lord's. In, in uh, chapter 46 to 47, Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 46 to 7, David saw Goliath as a chance to show off his God. David spoke with great confidence upholding God's reputation in his challenge. Is God's reputation your priority? How will the world see me in my situation? How will the world see me in my circumstance? How will the world see me? If so, if it's the same as David, then see your giant the same way David. Instead of fearing and running, the Bible records he ran towards his giant. He ran towards his, he ran towards the Philistine army. Imagine the whole of Israel's army. They, I told you there was two, there was a valley that separated them. There was on either side of the valley. There was either on either side. David goes by himself. Only with a shepherd's stick, five so, stones and a sling to go kill the Philistine uh, giant. The Philistine giant, right? He goes to kill him. The rest of the army is all scared and hiding away such confidence he runs towards the towards the giant he doesn't walk the bible says he runs towards the giant imagine a small boy like selfless faith complete dependence on god goes to go and just kill the enemy we too have to have such confidence and priority in our god's reputation that he will never let us down he welcomed to showcase god. he welcomed he welcomed the challenge to showcase God's power and reputation. Use your sickness as an opportunity for God's healing power. Your sin is God's opportunity to showcase His grace. Your struggling marriage can be the billboard for God's power. See your struggle as God's canvas to paint the colors of His supremacy and His power and his deliverance every single time. For all to know that you serve a mighty and powerful God that has your best interest at heart, who will never disappoint you as you trust his reputation to deliver you. Amen? Like David, like David when he went in the name of the Lord, go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and kill your giant with a stone of priority. The stone of priority is that you will prioritize God above your situation, above your sickness, above your depression, above your debt, above everything. Prioritize God's reputation because God will never let you down. He has a reputation to uphold. You, I don't know if you still remember the message, but that when, they, when Moses had to represent God, the first time he said to him, strike the rock. The second time he said, speak to the rock. And when Moses struck the rock and he didn't represent him correctly to the people, because the first time all the people were not gathered and the elders were not gathered. But the second time God spoke to Moses and he said, speak to the rock because he wanted to show himself for great to the people. Moses represented God incorrectly. He showed him as a God of anger instead of a God of mercy by speaking. That's why Moses did not go to the promised land. So how you represent God is very important. In your situation, in your circumstances, in your debt, in, your, in whatever situation you are placed with and whatever giant you are facing, represent God correctly. You have to represent God correctly. And you must know that he's a God of his reputation. He said healing is your portion. He said deliverance is your portion. He said Jesus died and became poverty that you and I might be rich. Jesus took upon everything on Calvary's cross. So we have to stand with that stone of priority to represent him correctly, that, the, that his reputation must be upheld in each one of our lives. Amen? That every giant must come down and die because of God's reputation. The stone of passion. What is the stone of passion? I was looking at the meaning of passion. Passion is, it means that 
it's a ba- you can barely control that emotion. You can barely control that emotion. When I looked at David, he could barely control his emotion. He could barely control himself. He went running to, to Goliath. Somebody would say, is he crazy? Is he mad? What is wrong with him? How can he just go running to, to a giant knowing that Goliath is so big and look at all of those things. But passion drove him that he ran to Goliath. Everyone was running away, but David was running towards his giant. Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 48. His passion for God kept him running towards his giant, knowing he's God. <coughs> he was only but a youth. He was only a shepherd boy. Who would bet on David? Who would? You know what? People take, say, you know what? I don't think that that's going to work. I don't think that's going to happen. Not the Israel, not the Philistines, nor the Hebrews, nor David's siblings, nor David's king had any faith on him or took a chance on him or, bet, or would put their faith or confidence that David could kill Goliath. Nobody did. But God did. So if God does for your, the passion that you have for him, and if your emotion, your emotion, you are emotionally controlled by his spirit, he's never going to disappoint you. He will never disappoint you. And God but God did. And since God did, and since David knew that God did, he pursued his giant. And he overcame him and he killed him. You must do the same. What good did worrying do for you? What good does worrying do for you? If you're looking at your situation and you're thinking about it, and you're looking at it, and you're thinking about it, and you're pondering about it, and you're worrying about it, did it change anything? You know how Goliaths are so big? Sometimes we look at if we can even number every hair on his head. We know how many numbers are Goliath's head. We, we have numbered every hair on his head. We have fine printed every detail of the giant that we have that's in front of us. And it has done us no good. Our, the problem may be prevailing and it may stand. But the detail of the problem doesn't change it. Knowing that, knowing how, how big the giant is doesn't change it. Listing the hurts won't heal them. You know, we have this saying that we say it's Murphy's Law. It comes in threes. You know, we say that it comes in threes. So we say, you know, I had this problem, then I had that problem, then I had the other problem also. Listing them won't heal them. Itemizing your problems won't solve them. Categorizing rejections wouldn't remove them. Because, you know, if we categorize the level of our rejections, this, you know, this wasn't so bad, but that was really bad. So we tried to we, we, we tried to find a scale on how to fit our problems in into our life. And God doesn't want that. David created mental instability for his giant because he emphasized the Lord. When, when Goliath saw David, he felt so reduced, he felt insulted, didn't he? He felt so insulted. He says, am I a dog? Did you come to you with a shepherd's stick? You come to me with a shepherd's stick because he said sticks. That's why he mentioned the word stick because he saw the stick. He didn't know David was a shepherd boy. He doesn't know David's history. He just saw the small boy, a youth coming up to him with a stick. And he says, am I a dog? That's the Bible. The Bible used the word disdain. disdain. Why? Because it was not equal to his supremacy. To what he felt. David created mental instability. You may look like you don't have much. You may look like a small person, insignificant, but you have a great power that works within you, the power of the Holy Spirit. And you only have to speak the word of the Lord and demons tremble. The Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus, demons tremble and sinners are set free. Is that not true? So where the whole world is bound with fear and with strongholds, you just come in the name of Jesus, as simple as that. Imagine that. You know, yesterday when I was sitting and I was preparing the word, I had the word prepared from last week, it was going to be part one and two, right? And I was putting all my notes together and I was sitting and, and seeking God. And suddenly I felt excruciating pain. Excruciating pain. And I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You just come in the name of Jesus. David did the same. Because 
if you categorize the level of your pain and see now which painkiller you're going to take, which is stronger, it may help you for the season, but it's still going to be there. You're not going to kill it. The only way you will overcome it is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter how, how insignificant you may seem, the enemy is confused in your prayers. You create mental instability amongst your enemy in your demons and your giants that come up against you and start praising God in your problem. Because when David looked at Goliath, he saw this huge giant, then he saw God, he saw Goliath through the eyes of God as insignificant. So he took off the armor and he went to face him. When Goliath saw David, he became confused and created mental instability. How dare they send this little boy to me with a stick and I'm coming to him with a sword and a javelin and all these things. So David says, I do not come to you with a sword. I do not come to you with a javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Didn't he say that? So as David did, so must we. He emphasized the Lord. Remember, take up the stone of passion. Never run away. You know, when you're passionate about something, no matter who tells you what, you have made up your mind. That's your passion. And you will be suit. David did that. So should we. The stone of persistence. David saw one challenge. David saw one challenge. Who you could see was in front of him. There was only one challenge. That was Goliath. Why did he keep it? But he didn't, he didn't pick up only one stone. He picked up five stones. Right? He was going to do whatever it takes to kill his giant. David probably picked up five stones knowing that Goliath had four relatives. And Goliath did have four relatives. The Bible records in 2 Samuel, I think it's um, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 21, if you read the Bible, it talks about David, I mean, Goliath's four relatives. And he talks about one of the relatives that Goliath had also had, one of them had six fingers on each hand and he had six stones. And this was a massive killing machine. And David didn't kill all of his relatives on the one day, but there were seasons in his life where David's army killed each one of them and completely destroyed Goliath's family and every giant that existed. Because the Bible records they went to war again against the Philistines. They went to war against, against the Philistines. So they, sometimes you have to be persistent until every giant is killed. You have to be persistent and do whatever it takes to pursue your giants and kill them. He was not only persistent in his preparation, but he wanted to make sure that nothing was going to last. You too have to ensure the same. You have to pursue your, your giant and if the need arises, you have to make sure that they're killed. The Bible records in, in 2 Samuel that other giants existed, right? David was ready to use every stone and do whatever it took to make sure every giant was killed. David was ready to do whatever it takes. We too have to imitate him. Never give up. One prayer may not be enough. David, you prayed about the situation. It didn't change. That is not enough. You have to continue. Pray again. If it didn't work, pray again. If it didn't work, pray again. You have to be persistent. One apology might not do it. Sometimes you may apologize and it, and it didn't bring the outcome. It didn't change what you expected it to change. Apologize again. Do it again. Be persistent until you get your result. Do not give up. Maybe one day or one month may not be sufficient to solve the problem. Don't give up. Continue. Be persistent until you kill the giant in your life. Be persistent. Do not give up. You may, be a, you may be knocked down a few times. Never give up. Never give in. Never quit. Don't ever quit. The Bible records that David continued pursuing. The Bible records that he was actually weak and the one of the giants was going to kill him. But he raised men up and he, the men that went to war with him ended up killing the giants. And they said, no, they're not going to align to God to battle with them again because he became weak and one of the giants nearly killed him and he thought he had killed David. 
So remember that you're, you have a strong support system around you. People are persistently praying with you. We are holding you in prayer. You don't give up. You don't give in. You stand up and you stand out to be persistent that every giant must come down and die in the name of Jesus. You have, you have the weapons of warfare. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. David said, before he even used the sling, can you imagine this? A, a giant is standing in front of you, right? 500 kilos. Five small pebbles. We didn't take a rock and shoot at Goliath. He took a small stone, a pebble, that's what the Bible records, it was a small stone. If you take a small stone and hit it onto 500 kilos of something, is it gonna fall down? We see here that even though it was in the Old Testament, but we still see the word of God bringing Goliath down. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. The word of God still was prevailing. I want you to try it. Take a stone and hit 500 kilos down and see if it comes up. So before then, you have to have your confidence in God, knowing that even before you approach your problem, it's going to come down in the name of Jesus. That every stronghold must come down. Every Goliath must die in the name of Jesus. Every giant in your life, have, you have the potential to kill and destroy every giant that you are currently faced with. Do what David did. Never give up. Never quit. Keep on and keep at it until you get the desired result. Keep on and keep at it until you get the desired result. Never give up prayer. Never give up doing what is right. Never give up changing what you are doing. When David sinned, yes, he failed. Yes, he fought. Yes, he wronged God. But did he give up? Did he say, I can't pray anymore because God won't listen to my prayers? Did he do that? No, he didn't. He said, God actually says David was a man after his own heart. David knew how to repent. David knew how to bring correction to his wrongs. David knew how to do that. We too have to learn from that. Every giant must come down. Every giant must come down. Every giant in our life must die. If you prayed about a situation, if you prayed about something, don't give up if it didn't change. Continue praying. Continue holding on to God's word. Continue speaking to that giant and killing it in the name of Jesus because it has to go. It has to. You know, if we just give up and, and we say that, you know, God doesn't want to answer this prayer. That is not true. That is deception from Satan. That is not true. What does God's word say? God says he wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. We must have life and have it abundantly. All the promises of his word is what he wants for our life. So if we're not living in those promises of the word, then we have to kill the giant that is withholding those promises from manifesting in our life. And we have to trust God. David took five stones. He made five decisions. We have to do the same. We have to make a decision today to write down victories of our past. We have to make a decision to pray and to soak ourselves in God. We have to make God's reputation a priority in our life. We have to have passion, like David did, for the things of God and knowing full well that God is more than evil. And we have to persist and persevere. We cannot just give up and give in. When one, it doesn't work one time, it doesn't mean to say you, give, you have to give up. When Jesus prayed for the man that was blind and he said, what do you see? He said he couldn't see, it was still like, it was, his vision was still there. Jesus prayed again. If Jesus was on earth, God on earth, and if he did it, to pray again, we too have to do it again and again until we receive the desired result. To kill the giants in your life, remember how David did it. And you do the same. God honors his word, and it will surely come to pass. In all of David's interaction with Goliath and his giants, and every other giant that he faced in his life. Pay attention to his speech. Pay attention to how he spoke. Pay attention to how he had confidence. And you will understand how he received his successes. He praised, he worshiped. And there's times when he felt low, when he felt abandoned, he spoke to God and he said to God, Lord, I feel like you have abandoned me. I feel like I don't have your, your help 
I feel like you turned your face away from me. If you read the Psalms, if you read David's writings, you will see how he felt, that he felt rejected, he felt abandoned. We also do the same in, uh, in our daily walk. But then he strengthened himself in the Lord. He remembered what God has done. And he came back and he says, Lord, you will protect me. The whole world right now is using Psalms 91. Coming under the shadow of the Almighty. Where did it come from? From the psalmist. And we don't want to be, we don't want to pick and choose what we want to use. We want to use God's word holistically for every area of our life. Amen. So we stand with the same confidence today. With the same confidence as David did. Because we have the spirit of the living God in us. The same God that David worshipped is the same God we worship. Yesterday, today and forevermore. It's established for all eternity. That it's the same God. So we have the same confidence. We have the same power. We have the same victory. We have the same dominion. Every giant must die. You have five stones. You have five principles. You can use that today to bring down your giant and kill your giant. The stone of the past, the stone of prayer, the stone of priority, the stone of passion, the stone of persistence. Do you call Jesus Savior and Lord of your life? As David was calling God Lord of his life. David knew how to call upon God. Do you know how to call upon God? God did not disown David, no matter the sin. God forgave David. He loved David. He led David. And God would do the same thing. Call upon him today. When you render obedience to God, he renders obedience all of heaven's resources to you. All you need to do today is trust him. Your greatest giant will be killed and fall down. Your failures will be destroyed and it will become successes in, in your trusting, in your trust as, as you trust as David did. Today I want you to remember that God is faithful. You must remain faithful. Can we all just stand? And just bow our heads in prayer as we seek God that his word may manifest in our lives. If you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life and break free from the prison of sin and condemnation and desire to experience the glorious kingdom of God, all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. This is according to Romans chapter 10 verse 9. This will be the most important decision you will ever make. I pray that you will decide to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. If you have made this decision, repeat the repentance prayer with me and be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of the living God, that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust you and follow you as Lord and Savior of my life. I pray and ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh uh -huh.